Hey, how's everybody doing today? Shane here. So today I thought I'd make a little video on uh, Seeker Wine while I also read from you one of my favorite books, uh, Thoreau on Man and Nature. And I think this is something I want to do, you know, every once in a while I'm going to read a chapter from this book and after a couple of videos we'll have the whole book done yay so this is once again Thoreau on man and nature uh, and this is a compilation by Arthur G. Volkman from the writings of Henry D David Thoreau and it's a great book uh, I bring this with me on a lot of my camp outs and I always have this book we can just read. It gives me a little inspiration and, you know, helps me uh, just contemplate life a little bit. So I'd like to share it with you. Now for today's wine, like I said, we got the Seeker. I've never had this before. I am not a big wine drinker, but eh, why not? We can stay classy. So this is the Seeker. It's a Pinot Noir, Noir. I don't know how you say that. It was made in France, 2017. It says, discover France's beautiful and rugged heartland. Here on ancient hillsides and rooted in rich and rocky soil lies some of the world's most coveted Pinay Noir vines. Uh, has notes of wild berries and pomegranate with gentle tannins. It's good pairing with pasta, pizza, barbecue, and cured meats. I'm going to go ahead and cure it with some Marlboros. Or pair it with some Marlboros. <laughs> Let's see how it is. No cork, which is awesome for me. Let's see how this thing is there. Put that there. It's got a nice grapey smell. Oh, and that's a nice blood red wine. So, it's definitely got a like a red, blood red color to it. Ooh. The Seeker. I thought it was an appropriate name for the book we're about ready to read. Put that down there. Oh, it's kind of dry. It leaves a little dry taste in your mouth. I think some people like this. So Thoreau on man and nature. I'm just going to start at uh, chapter one. Chapter one is Alma Natura. Every leaf and twig was this morning covered with a sparkling ice armor. Even the grasses and exposed fields were hung with innumerable diamond pendants, which jingled merrily when brushed by the foot of the traveler. It was literally the wreck of jewels and the crash of gems. Such is beauty ever. Neither here nor there, now nor then, neither in Rome nor in Athens, but wherever there is a soul to admire. If I seek her elsewhere because I do not find her at home, my search will prove a fr fruitless one. The thin snow driving from the north and lodging on my coat consists of those beautiful star crystals. Not cottony and chubby spokes, but thick and partly transparent crystals. They are about a tenth of an inch in diameter, perfect little wheels with six spokes without a tire, or rather with six perfect little leaflets, fern-like with a distinct straight and slender midrib, rain from the center. How full of the creative genius is the air in which they are generated. I should hardly admire more if real stars fell and lodged on my coat. We, we are rained and snowed on with gems. What a world we live in. Where are the jeweler's shops? There is nothing handsomer than a snowflake and a dewdrop. I may say that the maker of the world exhausts his skills with each snowflake and dewdrop he sends down. We think that one is mechanically coerced and that the other simply flows together and falls. But in truth, they are products of enthusiasm. 
the children of an ecstasy, finished with the artist's utmost skill. This restless and now swollen stream has burst its icy fetters. And as I stand looking up it westward for half a mile, where it winds slightly under a high bank, its surface is lit up here and there with a fine green silvery sparkle, which makes the river appear something celestial, more than a terrestrial river, which might have suggested that with surrounded the shield of Homer, if rivers come out of their icy prison, thus bright and immortal, shall not I too resume my spring life with joy and hope? Have I no hopes to sparkle on the surface of life's current? I have an appointment with spring. She comes to the window to wake me, and I go forth an hour or two earlier than usual. Though as yet the thrill, the trill of the chirp bird is not heard, added like the sparkling bead which burst on bottled cider or ale. When we wake indeed with a double awakening, not only from our ordinary nocturnal slumbers, but from our darunal, uh, from our darunal, we burst through the thallus of our ordinary life with a proper exipple we take with emphasis. The grass flames up on the hillsides like a spring fire, as if the earth sent forth an inward heat to greet the returning sun. Not yellow, but green is the color of its flame, the symbol of perpetual youth. The grass blade, like a long green ribbon, streams from the sod into the summer, checked indeed by the frost, but anon pushing one on again. Lifting its spear of last year's hay with the fresh life below, it grows as steadily as the rill oozes out of the ground. It is almost identical with that for in the growing days of June, when the rills are dry, the grass blades are their channels, and from year to year the herds drink as this perennial green stream, and the mower draws from it be, betimes their winter supply. These motions everywhere in nature must surely be the circulation of God. The flowing sail, the running stream, the waving tree, the roving wind. Whence else there are infinite health and freedom, I can see nothing so proper and holy as unrelaxed play and frolic in this bower God has built for us. The suspicion of sin never comes to this thought. Oh, if men felt this, they would never build temples even of marble or diamond, but it would be sacrilege and profound but to sport them forever in this paradise. I saw a distant river by moonlight, making no noise, yet flowing as by day, still to the sea, like melted silver reflecting the moonlight. Far away it lay encircling the earth. How far away it may look at night, and even from a low hill, how miles away down the valley, as far off as paradise in the delectable county, country. Delectable country. There is a certain glory attends on water by night, by its heavens are related to the earth, undistinguishable from a sky beneath you. The seeker is not bad. It is just a little dry for my taste. Let me presume. It is a luxury to muse by a well side in the sunshine of September afternoon, to cuddle down under a gray stone and hearken to the siren song of the cricket. Day and night seem henceforth, but accidents and the time is always a still eventide. And as the close of a happy day, parched fields and mullions, gilded with the slate and rays are my diet. I know of no words so fit to express this disposition of nature as Alma Natura. Say it with me. Alma Natura. Alma Natura. October is the month for painted leaves. Their rich glow now flashes around the world as fruit and leaves and the day itself acquire a bright tint just before they fall. So the year near its set in October is its sunset sky. November, the later twilight. <clears throat> we had a remarkable sunset one day last November. I was walking in on a meadow, the source of a small brook, when the sun at last, just before setting after a cold gray day, 
reached a clear stratum in the horizon and the softest brightest sunlight fell on the dry grass and on the stems of the trees in the opposite horizon and on the leaves of the shrub oaks on the hillside while our shadow stretched long over the meadow eastward as if we were the only motes in its beam it was such a light as we could not have imagined a moment before and the air also was so warm and serene that nothing was wanting to make a paradise on that meadow when we reflect when we reflected that this was not a solitary phenomenon never to this happen again but that it would happen forever and ever an infinite number of evenings and cheer and reassure the latest child that walked there it was more glorious still evening though the sun set a quarter of an hour ago his rays are still visible darting half away to the zenith that glow and morrow in the west flashes on me like a faint present presentment of morning when i am falling asleep a dull mist comes rolling from the west as if it were the dust which day has raised a column of smoke is rising from the woods yonder to uphold heaven's roof till the light comes again the landscape by its patient rest in there teaches me that all good remains with him that waiteth and that i shall sooner overtake the dawn by remaining here than by hurrying over the hills of the west well thank you for uh staying with me as i read this chapter chapter two is of aspirations and i will continue on with another video and probably another wine, another wine testing uh i love that tell me what you guys thought you know uh maybe if you get a chance go outside somewhere nice and listen to this video to the words and see if it resonates with you you know especially in this time of year you know it, it's nice to remember how beautiful nature is so with that you all stay safe have a good day go try find this seeker it's not bad if you like dry wine the seeker all right peace